While I think data science is probably the best profession out there, it's definitely not for everyone. I think anyone can become a data scientist, but that doesn't mean that they should. So in this video, I want to go over several telltale signs that a career in data science may not be for you. Let's get into it. I often get questions from people asking what kind of maths knowledge they need to land that entry level data science role. I think at the minimum or at like the average level, the maths is the maths you would learn at high school or A level. However, I really recommend the knowledge you need is probably more at the first or second year of most STEM subjects that you study at university. Now, of course, you don't need to know everything to a super granular detail, but having a really good grasp and intuition behind key concepts is kind of what you're aiming for. Sure, you can land a data science role being weak at maths, but you will never really break through into the top echelon of practitioners. And that's just the brutal truth. I appreciate that some people really struggle with maths and it's not everyone's cup of tea. But if you outright despise it and refuse to develop your skills in it, then I'm afraid you're out of luck if you want to be a top tier data scientist. If you are looking for a roadmap to learn the required maths and statistics to land the entry level data science role, then check out these two previous videos on screen here for a really good breakdown of the exact concepts you need to learn. As a data scientist, you are expected to know how to code and also be reasonably good at it. Learning to code, in my opinion, is slightly easier than learning the required maths, but this ultimately comes down to your background and what you find more natural to understand. The way data science is going, we now need to be more proficient in coding than we did in years past. Data scientists nowadays own some part of the deployment process, so we need to be aware of software engineering principles and cloud computing architecture. Therefore, we must continuously upskill and improve our coding skills. If, like the math section, you really despise coding and really don't like it, then again, data science is probably not the profession for you. If you're looking for a roadmap to learn Python, then check out these two videos that I've linked on screen here. This is a video I've done in the past, which gives you a breakdown of all the Python concepts you should know and a framework of how you can learn them. From the last two points, you can clearly see that being a data scientist means you've constantly got to upskill and learn new things at pretty much a yearly basis. I mean, as data scientists, we're right in the middle of a massive AI boom and we need to constantly be on top of this new technology. This means, as a data scientist, you must constantly invest time in learning all this new information, typically outside your 9 to 5. You must embrace a growth mindset and believe that you can learn new skills and develop your current abilities. Sure, it will take time, but you're confident you'll get there in the end. If you are the type of person who wishes to know everything about a field, then I'm afraid data science is not that. I often say that you can't complete data science. And what I mean by that is that it's such a big field and it's constantly developing. You will never learn everything. Even if you tried, it will take, you know, more than a several lifetimes to learn everything data science currently has. And that's not even considering, like I said, all the new developments that are constantly happening. So if you want to learn everything about a certain field, then data science is probably not for you. Now, to piggyback on my last point, with all these latest AI developments, tools and technologies constantly being released, it's really easy to think that you pretty much don't know enough or you barely know anything. This often leads to the dreaded imposter syndrome. Wikipedia defines imposter syndrome as, imposter syndrome is a psychological occurrence. Those who have it, may doubt their skills, talents or accomplishments. They may have a persistent internalized fear of being exposed as frauds, despite external evidence of their competence. Those experiencing this phenomenon do not believe they deserve their success or luck. In more layman's terms, it basically means that you basically just think you're like a fraud and that you got to the position where you are, but you don't really know everything and you don't know how you got there and it must be some sort of luck because your abilities are not what deserve to be in the position that you're in. This feeling is particularly prominent within the tech industry because like I said, there's so many developments and everyone's chasing those buzzwords. It's really easy to think that you don't know anything. I don't think you can escape feeling like an imposter as a data scientist, to be honest, but you can definitely nullify its effects 
the more you kind of experience it. Over time, you will deal with imposter syndrome a lot more, but I think it'll kind of be always present, at least the way data science currently is. So if you don't like the feeling of being an imposter, then data science is probably not the right position for you. As a job, data science is quite open on how you solve a problem. A stakeholder will typically come to you with a business scenario or business problem, and it's kind of your job to translate this business requirements into a framed data science problem. There is no set process or instructions to follow on how to do this. You must use your experience, skills, and expertise to find the best solution to that problem. Now, there's obviously help from seniors and other people in your team, but that's not always the case. This kind of open way of solving a problem is a double-edged sword. On one hand, it can be quite liberating in that you can try new things, implement new models, and just try new tools to solve the problem at hand. However, if you're quite inexperienced or you don't know so much about the area, it can be quite daunting because you don't really know how to approach it because there's no set process for you to follow. So you're kind of left to your own devices and you may go wrong or miss critical things that could jeopardize a project. This way of working may not suit everyone. I frankly really love it because like I said, you can try new things, implement new strategies, and this like self-led development whilst also solving a business problem really inspires me. Whereas some other people may prefer a real thorough step-by-step -step process to ensure that they don't go wrong. Real life data sets are never as clean as the ones you get in tutorials or on websites like Kaggle. In reality, most of the work you do as a data scientist is kind of messy and scrappy in most cases. You have to find data from different parts of the business, communicate with people in different sections, and ultimately build like a really rough initial solution to demonstrate value and show the initial work you've done to the stakeholder. Not to mention that during this main project, you might have some other small ad hoc tasks to do. You may have a PR to review in GitHub, or you're working on a presentation that you plan to deliver in a few days time. Of course, there are many tactics to focus on one task at a time and different companies will work in different ways. But from my conversations, it's kind of similar across the board. So you'll never have a dull day, but in most cases, it'll be quite hectic. These points I've just mentioned are not meant to discourage you from entering the field of data science. It's just to be really transparent of some of the things that you can expect as a career in this field. And on another note, we're very close to 5k subscribers. So thank you to everyone who subscribed so far, it really means a lot. And if you're watching this and haven't subscribed, then there's still time to click the button below. Anyway, in celebration of potentially reaching 5k subscribers, I want to do a Q&A video. So if you have any questions for me, then link them in the comments below or message me on my various social medias, which are linked in the description. I very much look forward to all your questions and I'm really happy to celebrate 5K when we get there.